Hello everyone, today's we'll be talking about Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. This is going to be a spoiler video right here. If you've never seen this movie, don't watch the rest of this video. As I talk about this movie, I'll be talking about both cuts in between this video. We had to wait six years for another Halloween movie to be made that left us on a cliffhanger with a lot of unanswered questions that fans wanted to know in the last movie. Originally, this movie was going to be titled Halloween 666. The title is cursed for how bad this movie is. It's the last time they used numbers in a Halloween sequel to date. This movie is a complete mess. It has no idea what direction it wants to go in. This is one of the worst Halloween movies ever made. It tries way too hard. It feels like a poor man's version of Rosemary's Baby mixed in with a satanic cult horror movie with the debate on if Michael Myers can die or not. This movie makes it clear Michael Myers is a supernatural. He was possessed by a thorn devil and it was a cult crew that manipulated Michael Myers and he was a puppet. This explains why he kills his family bloodline. They tried way too hard to try and explain why Michael Myers kills where it goes back to the first movie. We don't need an explanation why Michael Myers kills. It takes away Michael Myers' mystique and why he kills explanation. If they had gone the anthology route after Halloween 3, this could be more of a compelling satanic cult movie. You can also point out the satanic cult movie that is Michael Myers thrown at the last minute for marketing the movie. If you all thought Halloween 5 was bad, this movie makes Halloween 5 The Revenge of Michael Myers look like an Oscar movie compared to this garbage. This is the first Halloween movie made by Dimension Studios. Mustafa Akka owned the rights of the Halloween franchise, rights expired, and he sold the rights to the Dimension Studios. In one of the books I have on the Halloween movies, I read Quentin Tarantino was offered to direct this movie, but he turned it down. I don't see Tarantino directing a Halloween movie. It doesn't fit his style. They also originally wanted Peter Jackson to direct this movie, but again, I don't see that. It was directed by Joe Chappelle, who directed the fourth Hellraiser movie, Bloodline, two years later. From what I read, despite directing this movie, he has admitted that he's not a fan of the Halloween films. Then why they hired this guy to direct this movie? It's not like the franchise. It makes no sense. This was the kind of movie where I had a lot of studio interference, creative differences, rewrites to the script, hiring new writers and directors who had their own original ideas, but their ideas were either scrapped or rejected, or they got fired and hired new people to write this movie. But yeah, this movie's final result bombed and it failed. It's another movie that can't make up its mind on what the movie wants to be. If it wants to be a Michael Myers movie or a satanic cult movie, they ended up not pleased and satisfying anyone in the end. I read the actors, writers, producers, and the director have admitted over the years they disowned this movie. I can't blame them for that. It said this was Donald Pleasant's last movie before he died. You can tell he was not well and he was tired, burnt out. He doesn't do much. You can tell he didn't have any energy left during the making of this movie. Donald Pleasant died after they finished making this movie. He said this movie was the best Halloween sequel script he read, but that was probably his illness talking. The funny part is, he originally did not want to come back, but he said he liked the script, but again, which one? Which script did he read that sounded good compared to what we got for this movie's final result? From what I also read and learned comparing the two cuts, the producer got a little more character film with Dr. Loomis. Joe Chappelle did not like Donald Pleasant's portrayal as Dr. Loomis' portrayal in the original cut. His scenes were cut out of the original producer's cut for the theatrical cut. Dr. Loomis basically has no development in the theatrical cut, but in the producer's cut, he's got somewhat of a better written arc. My friend Chris has pointed this out how in the last two movies, Dr. Loomis had scars he suffered from Halloween 2. With no explanation, those scars are gone. Did Dr. Loomis have plastic surgery between films that we did not know about? In the producer's cut, Loomis explains that Dr. Winnie got plastic surgery in the theatrical cut. They cut that line out. Just like the last movie, it's nice to see him again. He gives it his best in all, but he's not saved the movie and bring any new material. It's the same thing we've seen all over again for the last couple of movies. In the last movie, we thought Dr. Loomis died, but I guess he survived the stroke and became a recluse the last six years of his life. But once Michael Myers is on the loose, it's time to gear up once again. How did he survive his stroke and who the heck cares and who knows? When I first saw this, I was upset Daniel Harris was not in this movie like all Halloween fans. When I met her at Monster Man, I asked her why did she not come back for Halloween 6? And she said she did not like the script because Jamie dies. And I can see why it makes sense. She did not want her character to be killed off. 
I don't think this actress is bad. She was killed off too early in this movie in the theatrical cut, and we did not get a chance to know this version of Jamie Lloyd. In the producer's cut, she's killed by Michael Myers. She was still alive, but she dies later in the movie at the hospital. I wish they had kept Jamie alive for most of the movie. Then it maybe could have been a slight improvement, but then again, what do I know? Jamie has a baby. We don't know who the father is at the start of this movie, but I'll get to that later in this video. You're going to be a little bit shocked and surprised. We know this baby's a Myers, and basically this is Michael Myers' next target killing Jamie's baby. Michael Myers was once again played by stuntman George P. Wilbur from Halloween 4, one of the few stuntmen to play Michael Myers more than once. The mask in this movie is once again is just alright. Still not close to being one of the best Michael Myers masks. I read they originally wanted Don Shanks to play Michael Myers again, but I guess after so many rewrites, they decided let's just bring back a familiar face instead of using Don Shanks again. Michael Myers does not have a lot of screen time in this movie. He takes a back seat. The character Kara Stroh is not interesting. She's one of the other weak parts of this movie. She was nothing special. She was just there. That's it. Granted, you do feel bad for her. Her dad is very abusive to her, which I'll dive into soon. It's not explained why her son Danny Stroh has these visions, psychic powers, of hearing the voice of the man in black telling him to kill, or that he grow to be the new Michael Myers. Just another waste of potential lazy subplot does not go anywhere or make any sense. It does not make any sense. Why are the Stroh family who adopted Lori moving to Michael Myers' old house? Not only is Michael trying to kill the baby, he's trying to kill the Strohs because they're living in his house and because they adopted his sister Lori. Again, the Myers house looks different than the last movie. In the last movie, it looked like a mansion. Now it looks like a regular average house. In case you're wondering, who was the man in black from the last movie? It was Dr. Wynn, an old friend of Dr. Loomis. He was in the first movie briefly after when Michael Myers escapes. Wynn asked Loomis, how does Michael know how to draw? And Loomis responds, maybe someone around who gave him lessons. But he was played by a different actor in the first movie. Not that you have to agree with me on this one. Maybe it was Wynn who taught Michael how to drive. But I could be thinking too hard on that. They originally wanted Christopher Lee to play Dr. Terrence Wynn, just think he turned down the role of Dr. Loomis in the first movie, but thankfully Christopher Lee dodged the ball with this movie. This was Paul Rudd's first movie. When I first saw it, I'm like, wow, they think they were going to be known for comedy movies like The 40-Year-Old Virgin, Knocked Up, Role Models, I Love You Man, Our Idiot Brother. Paul Rudd was also an anchorman with Will Ferrell in 2004. And playing Ant-Man in the MCU movies. When I go back to rewatch this movie, I make a joke turning to Ant-Man to escape Michael Myers. His performance as Tommy Doyle is hit or miss. I don't think he's horrible again. Not his fault. He's given poor direction and writing. If this movie had a better script, he maybe could have pulled off as Tommy Doyle. But I'll admit, it's hard to take him seriously sometimes in this movie. You can look back at this and say for the time he was miscast in the role as Tommy Doyle. His first scene, he's spying on Kara Stroh with a camera where she's half naked. Ladies and gentlemen, what a way to introduce your hero in the movie. He starts off as a peeping Tom. They originally wanted to bring back the original kid actor who played Tommy Doyle in the first Halloween movie. Reminding young ones, this was the 90s, no social media at the time. They could not find the original kid actor who played Tommy Doyle. While well, I do like this idea of bringing back Tommy Doyle, he's not given a proper arc in this movie. I read on IMDb.com how Paul Rudd said he really wanted this movie to be a big hitting success, but was disappointed when this movie failed. But thankfully since then he's had a great career as a comedic actor, and he's done some drama movies here and there. But he's mostly known for his comedic movies. He's not the first actor that comes to mind to be in a Halloween movie. He looks not like the kid actor who played Tommy Doyle in the first movie. In a weird way, despite this movie sucks, I did like it when the old lady who claimed she babysit Michael Myers when she was little. She explains to Dan the origins of Halloween, how it was celebrated a long time ago with sacrifice rituals. Also, for a little Easter egg, she's watching the 1925 Lon Chaney Sr. Fan of the Opera. They wanted to use some other horror movie, but I'm sure which one it was. They used a fan of the opera because it's in the public domain. Like a lot of Halloween fans, I had no idea there was a producer's cut to this movie that was not released on any home video at the time. The only way you could find the producer's cut to this movie was bootleg DVDs at conventions. Since then, both cuts have been released on Blu-ray. My first view of the producer's cut was in 2010. I remember coming home from high school one day being mad and annoyed. I put on a horror movie to make me feel better. 
I watched this more on YouTube and was not realizing how I was watching the producer's cut. At first I'm confused, like, wait a minute, this is not the Halloween 6 version I remember seeing before, but I had no idea back then there were two cuts of this movie. Back in the late 2000s and the early 2010s, I could watch all the Halloween movies on free for YouTube at the time. Another reason why the producer's cut was never released until years later, it did not do well with test screen audience at the time, and that's why they trimmed down the movie a little bit. Screen Factory got the rights to both cuts and released on the Halloween box set. James Rolfe did a video with Mike from Hack the Movies talking about how do you fix Halloween 6, and I highly recommend you go check that video out. If you ask me, how do I fix Halloween 6, I honestly have no idea this idea. This could go either way, there will be no perfect answer to fix this movie. We all have our own version and different opinions of how we see Halloween 6 differently. I think there's a lot of YouTubers who have already made a video on this topic. Maybe I might consider doing this on my own at some point. Maybe in a podcast with my friend Wolfman Sam. But to start, how would I fix Halloween 6 with some basic fixes right here? Before I do that, let me address the elephant in the room in case you're wondering, who is the father of Jamie's baby? Are you sure you wanna know? Okay, here it goes. It's Michael Myers. I am not joking. Michael Myers impregnated his niece. One thing I would fix right here in this movie is not make Michael Myers the father of Jamie Lloyd's baby. I'm okay with not knowing who the father is. It could be one of the random cult members. The first time I saw it, my reaction was, what the fuck? Michael Myers, Uncle Daddy, Jamie's baby. Oh my god, what were they smoking? Also, keep Jamie alive longer as I said before. I did like the kill scene when Michael Myers kills John Stroh this scene. I would keep the part in the theatrical cut, his head explodes in the producer's cut. He dies from being electrocuted. But he was an abusive asshole father to his family. No loss right here. For me, I picked the head explosion my version. That was a cool death scene in the Halloween series. They had this radio talk show host carriage. From what I read, it was intentional they were basically mocking Howard Stern. I'm not sure how true this is. It's been more over the years they originally wanted Howard Stern for this movie. But Howard Stern of the night was not offered a role in this movie. The ending from both cuts, and the producer's cut, I did not know what to make of this at first when I first saw this as a teenager. Michael Myers kills the cult members like a bloodbath. It doesn't make any sense how Tommy uses stones to stop Michael Myers from killing him for a brief second, standing like a statue. Lewis comes back to settle unfinished business, but when he takes off the mask, it was win. Michael Myers switched clothes to escape. From what I've learned from fans, basically the thorn curse is passed down to Dr. Loomis as a new caretaker. Because of Donald Pleasant's death, they could not make a follow-up to this movie. I also heard Donald Pleasant was going to do some more reshots, but again, his death negatively impacted that. What well, doesn't make any sense, why would they make Dr. Loomis the new caretaker? Should they pick someone younger? But whatever. At this point, the writers did not care at this point. This reminds me of the Universal's Mummy sequels. In the theatrical cut, it ends with Tommy hitting Michael Myers with a lead pipe like something out of a Three Stooges skit. Tommy, Cara, Dan, and the baby drive off to leave Haddonfield. Loomis stays behind. Then they cut to a shot of Michael Myers' mask lying on the ground with a needle, and you hear Loomis is screaming in the background. That's it. The end. Lazy ending, lazy writing, and a bad way for Donald Pleasance to go out. Here's my friend Joey's recording thoughts on Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Halloween 6 is another good movie in the franchise, and it once again stars Donald Pleasant. But which this time is his last, but it's another cool movie. It's not one of my favorite in this series, but, because of course, 1 through 4 is my top, but I have to say that I still like Part 6 a lot. Um, but no, it's still a great movie. I like this one a lot, too. And it once again has good effects in it. But I strongly I recommend this other movie, too. Um, Halloween 6, it's, it's, it's a cool movie, too. A messy movie with no idea what they were doing or what they wanted to make out of this movie. A sequel is not getting better for me with age, no matter its cult following status. It's a movie that answers some questions we did not get from Halloween 5, then it makes this question more, adding too much with no sense or logic. This movie makes me feel numb, exhausted to the point I lose interest and not giving a crap. It's a train wreck and clusterfuck. So I'm repeating myself right here. It was a sad finale, not a way to go over Donald Pleasant's playing Dr. Loomis one last time in the series before he died. If you ask me which version is better, 
neither. My advice, pick your poison. In my own opinion, neither one is better nor good. In my own opinion, they both suck the cuts. But if you like one of these cuts, that's fine. But I'll admit, I've gone back to rewatch this one on rare occasion to make fun of how bad it is. Nostalgia Critic or Mystery Science Theater 3000 style. A wasted movie is some potential, but just tries way too hard, as I said before earlier. This movie has no idea for itself what it wanted to be. That wraps up today's video. Stay tuned tomorrow for Halloween H2O.